Today, we're gonna go hang out with Dr. Mark Weislobel at Portland State University. Let's go. Okay, so this, this is actually, this is data, and this is a, what's called a regime map. And this is a liquid flow, and this is a gas flow. So liquid, liquids and gases flowing in low gravity, that could be disastrous for some people. That could be wonderful for others. The big problem is gravity's not there, so the bubbles aren't always at the top, right? Right. So this is what we call a map. And so this is an example of what the flow looks like in these different regimes. And just let me, for simplicity, just say, here's single lines of bubbles in here. Here's single lines and bubbles over here, but the bubbles are big enough that they move out and they leave the inter leave this, this flow. So this, in this regard, this is a passive phase separating flow. If I have bubbles in this thing, all the liquid goes out the bottom. So it's a gravity less conduit, but it's still, all the bubbles leave a certain place. It's like bubbles rising in a river. They eventually leave the river. Here, the bubbles are in this zone. They're merging with each other, but they don't leave. In this region, they merge and they leave. So in this dark red area, in this dark blue area, the, all the bubbles leave. So the conduit, if you throw a bunch of bubbles into this liquid, it flows along this channel, which has an arbit which has an irregular cross section, and all the bubbles leave it. That's great. So that's like fake gravity, right? We use surface tension to drive flow. Flow. This is the math. What we do is, for every one of those regimes, we construct force balances, we construct geometric relationships, we can use we use guided correlations to do this. We do a bunch of different mathematical things to guide a to develop a means to predict the performance of the liquid in that chain in that container. Mm -hmm. So here are a bunch of them. Now here here is that regime map. Here in this zone are the singles, here are the mergers, here are the mergers that leave, here are the singles that leave, here's the ingestion limit. It has all these different things that happen. We would like not to have to rely on huge data sets like this. We'd like it to be mathematical so we can kick back and on the bus calculate what the, the right shape of the system has to be to do the separation, which we want so much. Right. So let me superimpose that math on top of this. So these are all those lines identified by that mathematics. The boundary between mergers and singles. The boundary between singles and ultimate ingestion in the thing. The boundary, the, the enhanced stability region here, where single, that separating singles and total chaos. The, where mergers all of a sudden appear from single bubbles and, and how they transition into mergers that leave. So all the mathematics is right, has, what it has done is, means that we're not dependent on the huge data set anymore. Now we know this. And we know this as a function of the surface tension, the flow rates, the flow velocities, the flow rate ratios, the contact angle, the wedge corner angle, the length of the wedge, you know, the density of the fluid, all these things. Are those that, all the variables? Those are all the variables. That's a lot. I, I, don't, okay. I didn't name them all. You didn't? But, but, what, what are the other ones? I don't know. <laughs> okay, but, but there, okay, so maybe 10 or 15. You get a design that has that much flexibility in it, and now you have all kinds of room to do Incredible optimization, or at least parachute into a design geometry that's going to work. Yeah, that's more important. It's one thing to analyze a system that already exists. Okay, that's what numerics is for. But if you wanted to use numerics on a system that is you don't haven't even defined the geometry, you can't, right? And even if you can, it takes two weeks to get a certain solution, or even a month to get a solution. Useless to you. You've got to get the design together in two months. You'll never be able to get anywhere. So. And let, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it's difficult to get anywhere. But if you have an anal analysis that parachutes you, in, shoots you into the right geometry, then you've got, you got a great place to start. You're in the stadium. Your system's going to work. Now you can build it and test it and start tweaking from there. And then start the numerics with that geometry, you know, because you'll just be perturbing it to get the optimum from there. You won't be designing a whole new shape. And that's what we're doing here. So that's all you need, and now this corresponds to the real deal. So these, this mathematically determined region, that one, this one, this one, and this one, are all exactly what the engineer would like. You'd like to be right in the center of this one, for instance. So this is the system that you design. You design your system to operate with this liquid flow rate and this gas flow rate to be right in the center of there. There you have margin on all sides to be st stable. And you can actually determine what your margin is. So you'd be right. You'd have, you'd have uh, all, you'd have total path separation, Passive separation for single bubbles with a plus or minus 50% uncertainty. That's what the engineers want when you need to go design something. So cool. that's, that's kind of like one. And we do this over and over again on a bunch of different systems. So, so let's, uh, I, you know, that, that's one example of an equation. 
did it with that coffee cup thing, which maybe you saw. Here's another one where where let me let me show you this. So so um, so let's see. These are wait. Let's see this. I hit the okay. So here here's a sped up experiment of a space station experiment. Liquid is injected into this triangular container, and the liquid wicks along the corners of the container. So liquid is flowing from one side to the other. It looks like the bubble is flowing, you know, from one side to the other, but really liquid is being, is, uh, liquid is displacing the bubble by flowing from one side to the other. So liquid is right. whipping up here. And watch this bubble. This bubble tries to get entrained. So this bubble here will get wicked into it. It mer hits and merges. So this kind of a flow actually sweeps the liquid clean of bubbles, as well as moves the bubble from one place to another. So we just use clever geometry to make the liquid do what gravity would make it do. But we're using surface tension and wetting, you know, to do it. Okay, so these are different experiments. I don't need to explain those. But see, this is a case where here's a bubble in a tapering triangular cross section. As liquid gets pumped, this container has this cross section, and it it produces it produces this flow. So if you have this cross section, it's tapering. It's getting narrower as you go right to left, and so this sets up a capillary flow in this direction. As the liquid moves from here to here, it displaces the bubble, and you can see it moving down. I thought this was interesting. I generally thought of capillaries as solid tubes, but in this case, a capillary is formed between a solid and a gas. On the flip side, we could have a capillary flow of a gas between a solid and a liquid. Think a stream and a cave. Do you think it's possible to have a capillary flow of a solid between a gas and a liquid? Would wood floating down a river count? Here's a coordinate system introduced. Solve the governing equations for this. Find out that it's a linear kind of behavior and then find the equations for the behavior. Now this is solving a bunch of equations to get here, but this is the simplified result ends up here. So here, here is listed the different variables. Surface tension, viscosity, wetting condition, interior angle of the, of the cell, the length of the cell, the cross-sectional area, the perimeter of it, its total volume and time. That's a lot of variability in these, in these um, equations. Right. And so if we break these actually down, these, are, these terms are all embedded in these terms there. The thing is, it's a closed form expression for all the things we want to know. We want to know the flow rate. We want to know the stability. We want to know it all as a function of those things. So whether it's liquid helium or whether it's a silicon oil or whether it's a petroleum thing or a rocket fuel or whatever, plug it in. Get it. So we can figure out what design will give us the right flow rate. Those are advantages. We do this a million times. Other people in other laboratories do this a million times. NASA does it a million times. And now we're building up that, that whole thing. And now it's being automated on the space station. Yeah, you mean like, those are called robotic experiments and they're designed to do that and they can be controlled from the ground, but these are the kind of things that come out of that. So again, one after another, there's another 10 of them, or however many are on that list. Right. Awesome. Yeah.